Hello, and welcome to Enchanted Girls Costumes. Today is the first of four videos on the construction of the Robola Francais. I hope you enjoy. To begin my decorative petticoat, I cut two panels of silk to the length of my side seam measurement. I cut one of those panels down the center so I would not have a seam in the center front of my petticoat. With right sides facing each other, I pinned the cut edge of the panel to the center front panel of the skirt. You can see in this shot that I offset my fabric by about an eighth of an inch. I did it this way so I could encase the raw edge in the finished selvage edge of the fabric. I'm calling it a mock mantua maker seam because I sewed it by machine instead of by hand and essentially it follows the same principles as the hand sewn one would. Still working on the same seam, I folded over once again and continued sewing. Now you can see here my fabric kind of gets stuck in the feed dog. so. What I do to remedy that is just slightly pull on the tail and it just gives it enough tension for the feed dogs to catch the fabric and so it doesn't get pulled under the machine. And there's the lovely finished seam. The raw edges are completely encased and you can't see anything from the outside. For the back of the petticoat, I cut two lengths of silk 13 inches long and attached them together on the short ends. I then pinned that to the bottom edge of a length of cotton and repeated my mock mantua maker seam. This is a historical technique that was used to save on the amount of silk that was in a petticoat, and I believe it was Madame Pompadour who had this technique mentioned in one of her dress orders. The next step is attaching the front and back petticoat panels. With right sides together, I pinned from the bottom up, leaving a 12 inch gap at the top so I could have access to the pockets beneath. Starting at the bottom of the skirt, I sewed up to my mark for the pocket openings. Also, since this is a salvage edge, I don't have to worry about finishing it. Next up is the hem. I pinned it up by half an inch and then continued pinning it up another three quarters of an inch to get a nice clean finish. And instead of ironing at this point, I finger pressed it to keep it in place. I decided to hand sew my hem because this was an exterior piece of the garment and I wanted to have a nice finish. The stitch I used is a hem stitch, and I'll show you a close up of it in just a moment. So you can see what I'm doing here is just catching two or three threads and then sewing through to the other side, and it creates a nice clean finish. It took me around three hours to sew a 120 inch hem. The next step was draping the petticoat. I pinned together the side openings to the side of the mannequin and found the center front of the skirt. I folded over the seam allowance until the front was the length that I wanted and then pinned it in place. I then folded over the seam allowance at the side seams and leveled the difference between the two. I began the pleating 4.5 inches from the center front, making sure to keep the hem level and adjusting the seam allowance at the waist as needed. And I used my fingers as a guide for pleating. I used an inverted box pleat for the center back of the petticoat. And I just continued pleating and pleating and pleating. You can see here that the back of the petticoat has two extra panels that I ended up removing. After removing the petticoat from the mannequin, I secured the pleats in place with a whip stitch. Next, I attach 39 inch long twill tape waist ties on all four sides of the skirt. Try saying that five times fast.
The final step was adding the waistband. I used one and a half inch wide twill tape centered over the seam allowance of the skirt and sewed it on using a back stitch. Attaching the waistband can be easily done with a machine, but I decided since I'd done this much hand sewing, I may as well just continue. I then folded over the twill tape to the inside of the petticoat and used a whip stitch to secure it in place. You can also see in this shot how the interior edges of my petticoat are raw. You can leave it like this, but I think I'm going to go back and finish mine as my silk is prone to fraying. On the edges of the petticoat, I used a running stitch to enclose the waistband over the tie. Every three to five stitches, I will cut with the seam ripper, and I continue doing this all the way up the panel. I think this panel took me about three minutes to do. I just went back and checked my footage, and the timestamp came in at just over two minutes. Once I finished the seam, I went back to where I began cutting the thread. Flipping the fabric over, I grabbed the uncut thread and began to pull. The thread should come out quite easily and the two panels will come apart. I find this method is the fastest way for taking out a long seam without having to worry about accidentally catching the fabric. And with that, the main construction of the petticoat is complete. I find the easiest way to put on the petticoat is to tie the back portion of the skirt first, followed by the front portion and then tucking the excess ties into the waistband. And all that's left to do to finish off the petticoat is to decorate it. Traditionally, it was decorated before pleating, but since I wasn't sure how much fabric I had, I decided to wait on decoration until after I'd finished my rope. And there you have it. The first video on the construction of the Robe de la France is done. The next video will be part one of the sack gown and part two will be following shortly after. After putting a poll out on Instagram, I came to the conclusion that it'd be better to put out two shorter videos rather than one very long one. I hope you enjoyed this video on the construction of the decorative petticoat. I would love to know what you think about it in the comments below. If you're new to my channel and you like what you see, please click the subscribe button. You can also click the link at the top of the screen to see the intro to my Robe la France series and other videos on the construction of the undergarments. If you want to see a sneak peek of what's coming up, head on over to my Instagram and Facebook where I post regular progress updates. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!